Hey guys, welcome back to our Liberty House. My name's Beth and I'm standing today and underneath our arch trellis that's full of tomatoes. And I'm just really excited to share with you what's going on in our garden for the month of June. We have a ton of fruit set on everything and I just can't wait to show you. I'm gonna do a little harvest as we go. So let's just dive right in. So as you might know, we garden here in Sacramento, California, which is zone 9B and it gets really stinking hot here in June. So because summer months, I have to start filming really early in the morning because it's it's just unbearable to be outside. So it's like eight in the morning. Um, so I'm sorry if the lighting is a little wonky, but um, you'll just have to do with it because I can't deal with the heat in the middle of the day. Um, anyways, I am going to start over here. You guys know my format by now, um, and I'm just gonna, just show off these gigantic echinaceas. First of all, I like literally can't even see the top of them because they're taller than I am. Really, really cool that these have gotten so large. Um, the bees have been all over it. Gosh, you can see the spiders too. Like we're just like covered in spiders right now. Um, but that's a whole nother issue. Um, but yeah, so echinacea is looking great. Um, I'll also show you real quick the Rudeckia that's like full on bloom right now. I've been kind of watching this and it's a good time for you guys to see this because even a week ago, none of this was open and they are just thriving in this spot. And if you guys have been following along with me on my monthly garden tours, you might notice the oregano is gone. <laughs> so I talked to you guys last month about trying to keep it there through the season and I um, just got a wild hair and I pulled it out in the last few weeks and I transplanted it into this pot. I'm not 100% sure if it's going to survive. So far, it's not dead. It's not like loving its life like it was over there, but I have a feeling it's um, gonna bounce back. It's a pretty hardy herb. Um, and if not, I mean, it's not the end of the world. All right. Also in this bed, I have some peppers back here that honestly, once I pulled that oregano out, they've been looking a lot better. Um, these are jalapenos back here. And we have lots of flowers happening. Um, a couple little peppers starting to form back there, which is pretty cool. And you can see this poor jalapeno that's um, planted behind this rudbeckia is um, just really tall, struggling <laughs> to um, get that light, but it's, it's surviving. So we'll just see what happens there. And then kind of creeping along over here. The thyme that I have um, over here, another perennial herb is still in. I think I'm gonna end up pulling this eventually too. But for now, we're just leaving it in. It's flowering this time of year, so the pollinators are loving it. And then let me move around to the back side of this trellis because you can see it a little bit easier. What we have planted vertically over here. So first up is some butternut squash. So lots of really pretty flowers happening. And this thing has really blown up over the last couple weeks. You can see right here, we have a little baby butternut squash right there. So I'm excited to see how this thing does. And then moving over, we have two tomatoes on this vertical trellis and these are just like big slicer tomatoes and we have fruit set in here as well these things we did not do a great job pruning we were focused so much on pruning the tomatoes in the arch trellis these ones kind of just gotten forgotten about but um that's okay they're just a little bushier and really full in here and then this looks like, this is a rogue zinnia actually. We had zinnias in this bed last year and they um, self-seeded in a few places in our garden. Most of them just kind of letting them grow. 
And then over the last thing on this trellis, we have tomatillos. We have two tomatillo plants. Um, we've actually harvested um, twice already these tomatillos. And it looks like we have plenty more salsa coming in for the summer. We just harvested like two nights ago. So I don't think there's gonna be any quite ready just yet, but tomatillos are really fun because um, they grow inside these little husks. And um, when you can tell when they're ripe because um, the husk is gonna get full. Like this one's close. You can see like there's the fruit right there. You can start to feel them um, and then you can pull them out. Oh, here's a ripe one for you guys. So you can see it's um, actually like pulling through. Oh, oh, there we go. Pulling through that husk and it's so ready. So you, you peel the husk out and then you can cook up the tomatillo and um, cook it into some salsa. All right, let me move over into our second raised bed. Um, so you can see up here in front that oregano I transplanted. And then we have some strawberries that are shockingly doing still really well. We have um, quite a few that are uh, ripening in here. And I was kind of surprised just because it's so hot right now. I didn't think they would keep um, throwing out fruit, but they are. So um, I'm enjoying that. And in this bed, we have another gigantic echinacea. So I mentioned it last month, but these echinaceas are a perennial here. And really like I just cut them down to the soil level um, at the end of the season and then they grow. And this is their second year. And these things have just blown up. They were nowhere near this tall. I think um, they're probably about four feet tall and then add another foot for, for the bed. I'm only 5'3", so um, like I said, I can't even reach the top of them, but um, yeah, pretty cool. And then kind of back here hiding is another rogue zinnia from last year that's self-seeded and kind of hiding back here are a few beets that we have planted. Um, kind of hanging out right there. And in front of those are two zucchini plants, which you can see we are in the middle of <laughs> zucchini season already. Oh my gosh, there's three right here and another one over here. These were actually, when we bought them, supposed to be um, eight ball zucchini that Lucas was so excited for. So he hadn't grown eight ball. He wanted to make some like delicious sandwiches but uh, apparently they were mismarked at the nursery. So we just have a ton of regular zucchini, which if anyone's ever grown zucchini, you guys know the joy. So I'm gonna harvest these real quick. So I'm just gonna harvest these real quick. like the perfect size. There are three. Usually with zucchini throughout the season, if you haven't grown it, um, it will start to like grow kind of a stalk like thing. And the leaves at the base of the stalk tend to die as it continues to grow. So I usually clean up a lot of the older leaves just as it grows. Um, and some people even trellis it like using a tomato cage. And I kind of started doing that on one of our other zucchini plants. So I'll show you that in a little bit. But um, yeah, that's just kind of something that I do. Um, and I know some people too um, talk about hand pollinating your zucchinis. We personally don't do that. <laughs> I've never had to do that or never felt the desire to come out here and hand pollinate um, my squash. I get plenty of them without doing that. Um, and I think it just kind of goes to show, um, you know, 
a good intermixing and variety in your garden is going to attract those pollinators and your pollinators are going to do the work for you is my philosophy. But um, yeah, nothing against people that do that. I just personally don't. <laughs> And moving down the line in this bed, we have some more of our hot peppers. Um, so we have, um, gosh, I forget what this is. It's some sort of, I know this one's a scotch bonnet because that one still has the tag. And I think these are two Thai, thai chilies. I forget what this one is, but uh, it's starting to throw some peppers out, lots of flowers on these guys. They've gotten pretty tall, even though we did top them, but yeah, looking pretty good overall. And you can see too, if you guys remember, this is where we grew leeks over the fall and winter and spring. Those have all gone. They started to flower, so we chopped them out. Um, so their season is done. And I have a nice little spot here for something new. I haven't decided what we want to plant yet, but we have the space, which is always good. And then we have two of these little pollinator islands kind of in, inter um, placed in between some of these beds and we have lots of calendula. Calendula is such a good pollinator friendly flower. Really good if you like to play around with like um, making salves or any anything else because it's really good for your skin. We have stock here that's hanging on by a thread. I think their season's just about done. Same with this nasturtium. Um, is looking like it's seen better days. They really don't tolerate the heat very well. So might be pulling those, maybe starting to plant something new in, in here. But the calendula should last through the summer. Okay, and moving on down, what I'm really excited to show you guys is our tomato tunnel <laughs> for this year. So we planted all of our tomatoes or most of our tomatoes in this tunnel. And if you've been following along, our strategy on tomatoes is to, we plant them pretty close together about um, 12 to 18 inches apart. And then we do the kind of a single liter um, for a few feet into a dual liter. And at this point now, we have just let them branch out. We've stopped uh, pruning really and have just let them grow wild. And we have a ton of fruit set, which is so exciting. Um, nothing's quite ripe yet. But here I'll show you kind of some close-ups of what we have planted. Right here is a green zebra tomato. Right next to it we have black crim, which is like an heirloom variety. It's actually our first year growing black crim, so I'm excited to give these a try. And then here on the end, the really tall tomato are our cherry tomatoes. And you can see this is like our first ripe one. How exciting is that guys? I'm so pumped for tomato season. But yeah, these um, cherry tomatoes are always the fastest growers in our garden, which is why we planted them like on the inside because the inside tends to get the least amount of sun. Um, so we knew these would grow quickly and kind of make it to the top the fastest and get adequate sun up there. Um, on this side, pretty much the same. We have the cherry tomato here on the left, right there. And then we have more black crim. Another green zebra tomato. These are like one of our favorites. So stinking good. They stay relatively green, but you know they're ripe when they start to yellow. Um, right there. And they're just so juicy and delicious. And then um, we have six of these. We have six San Marzano tomatoes because we like to make some tomato sauce. And other kind of cooking type things. But yeah, lots of good stuff happening in our tomato land. Here's some more right here. And you can see this one. You've noticed a little bit of blossom end rot on just a couple tomatoes, not all of them which we combated and fertilized again um, just the other day. We try to fertilize during the growing season like every, about every six weeks. And we hadn't fertilized yet since we planted everything in. So um, hopefully that helps 
deal with the blossom end rot. We haven't seen it on like everything. So I'm not, we're not too concerned just yet about it, but we'll just keep an eye on it. So that is our tomato tunnel excitement. Um, I'm still getting some strawberries here in our gutter too, which is pretty wild. Cause I thought honestly, these strawberries were all dead, um, but they're doing really good. So I'm going to harvest these today. And then let me show you our second pollinator island. I'm actually shocked that this um, viola is still <laughs> happening, but this one gets pretty good shade. So I think that's maybe why you can see some really pretty stock, some more nasturtium. Nasturtium is another great pollinator friendly plant. It acts kind of as a trap plant and um, attracts any bad insects to this. So then it stays out of the rest of your garden, which is perfect. So I'm going to take a minute and harvest these strawberries real quick and then um, meet back up with you to show you this next bed. Okay, in our third raised bed here on this side, we have some dahlias planted right here in the front. It's my first year growing dahlias. Really, really happy with the blooms. They're absolutely beautiful. But literally, as I planted this, like some of the first leaves that popped out had powdery mildew on it, which is really odd, I thought. So I haven't really been disturbing this at all. I'm kind of allowing myself to enjoy these blooms. But I think probably by the time I see you guys next for the next garden tour, I'm going to have this pulled out just because I don't want any of that powdery mildew to spread to the rest of the bed which is such a shame, but I can plant something else, maybe some more zinnias, because um, they do so well in our zone. Uh, I do have some dill hanging on right here. It's probably on its kind of last, you know, few weeks or month. <clears throat> and then we do have some lettuces here. We really need to harvest some of these heads. I think we're gonna do that and do some meal prep for the week, because these two are looking like they're starting to um, want to go to flower and bolt, which um, usually means that it gets just kind of bitter um, and not so good to eat. It's kind of hard to see, but intermixed between our tomatoes, we did plant some basil that I've been already harvesting quite a bit of, so they're not that big. And then just a couple flowers over on this side. We have Agertum, which is a floss flower, and some zinnias over here as well. And then you can kind of see this big, beautiful spot. Uh, I think we're gonna start planting maybe succession some more lettuce, just because this bed gets a pretty good amount of shade um, and uh, gets some sun in the morning and then afternoon shade, which is really nice. So I'm thinking lettuces, but if you have any other ideas on what we should plant, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear. Okay, so moving on down, you guys might remember this was where we had planted all of our onions and garlic, which we have harvested all of that from all the beds and in its place, we have planted a couple pumpkins. So we have uh, a couple jack-o'-lantern pumpkins planted here. And over on this end is a sugar pumpkin, some more for baking. So we just got those in the ground to hopefully get some pumpkins in like September or October. And then over on that end right here are just some um, more perennial herbs. These are just like little chive plants. And then right here, I planted some new pots. So uh, you guys remember our fig tree right here. It's looking really good. I think in this fall, we'll get her in the ground, but you can see right up here, she's starting to give us some fruit. And she's just looking really good. Here's another one right over here. Figs grow really well in Sacramento. And 
down here, just some more flowers and herbs. Here's some French lavender I started from seed earlier this spring. And some rudbeckia. And then uh, my rosemary plant I actually transplanted as well. I'll show you, she used to be um, right over there, if you guys remember. Um, kind of taking over, similar story, and uh, thinking we want to plant something else right there. So we transplanted her into this pot just to better manage her size. And then kind of moving on down to this part of the garden. Let me show you Lisa and give you kind of an update on her. I think she's dead. <laughs> Um, which is so sad, but you can see like just no, um, nothing going on in her. We defoliated her after transplant and just not looking well. So I think, um, we haven't needed this. So we just have kind of left her in here, but I'm thinking we will be buying a new lemon tree this fall. And up here, just kind of the start of another little pollinator island. We've got a couple zinnias and a celosia. And then over here in this next tree box, we have a zucchini here. And you can see this is what I was kind of talking about with um, an option to quote unquote trellis your zucchini plant. So it just kind of allows you to get some of these leaves off the ground and um, soil level and as it grows up it will kind of grow into these taller ones and then you can easily um, defoliate as it grows up just to keep the zucchini healthy. Um, this tree box is another empty box. We got room for something else. Um, this is where our potatoes were that we harvested and then uh, squash heaven, right? Um, we have our yellow crookneck squash, which literally, look at these beasts. <laughs> I noticed them, we noticed them yesterday, um, and I need to harvest them today, so I'm gonna go do that now. But this thing is loving its life, and we are gonna need to have squash for dinner, I think. So let me go grab our snippers here. Gosh, yeah, look how big these are. here with the others. So much squash. And then you guys can see right here are Jerusalem artichokes. Let me try to get a better angle with less light in your face. Um, but yeah, these are in a tree box. It's like a rhizome type uh, plant and they get really, really, really tall. And once they start to die back, then you harvest what's in there and get some Jerusalem artichokes, which is cool. And then over here on our last bed on this side of the yard, we have our blueberries. These have pretty much done giving, are done giving us fruit for this season. I think the birds honestly took most of them. Um, and then another kind of little pollinator spot, we have marigolds, more calendula, and then um, first year for me growing the straw flower, it's really quite pretty. So I think I'll continue to grow it. It's pretty hardy and easy to grow. Don't mind the random tree that's growing like in between the garden box and the fence. I need to figure out how to rip that out. And then this was where I had our carrots that we harvested and I was thinking I would plant something new there. Um, but we, you know, built this trellis, which you guys maybe saw and put our cantaloupe on it and it is growing wild like totally loving it i need to actually train it to go up a little bit more but we have the space so i'm also kind of just letting it um, grow outwards too but it's looking great it's honestly like our first year we've had any sort of success with cantaloupe um, knock on wood that i didn't just jinx that but um, we'll see i haven't seen any um, fruits growing like this one I really should just trellis up um, so I might do that today um, but yeah a lot of a lot of flowers growing and other things which is great 
Another thing I'm really excited to show y'all is our bean forest. <laughs> Do you guys remember what this looked like last month? Um, Cause it wasn't anything like this. So the <laughs> beans that we planted um, are looking so good. Um, lots of flowers happening. I haven't seen too many actual beans forming yet, but I think it's gonna be really soon. Um, but it's just, it's so dense in here. I think it'll be interesting to see how harvesting goes with them, but we planted four different types of beans, um, like canning bean style. I'd have to look up honestly what they are. I don't remember right offhand, but I think, I think it's um, some like kidney beans, some great Northern beans. And I think there's two more, but I don't remember what they are, but I'm just so jazzed with how this looks. And it's kind of a twofold um, excitement because if you guys remember from last year, this trellis was where we had all of our tomatoes last year and our peppers. So um, those two plants, when any plant that puts on fruit takes a lot of nitrogen out of the soil and beans are a great rotational crop because beans actually put nitrogen back into the soil. Um, so this will be really, really good for this bed. Um, just as you kind of transition um, at the end of each season. If you have that capability, it's really, really good practice. Um, so I'm excited to see what it does to the soil in this bed. Um, on the trellis itself, we have a couple different plants growing. We have on this end our cucumbers, which are looking really good. I almost actually thought, we both thought that they were, sorry, this glare is terrible on this side. Um, we're dying, but obviously they're not. They're looking pretty good. We have some flowers forming. Haven't seen any cucumbers yet, but it's kind of hard to get to the bottom of this. There's actually some marigolds down here too, um, which are staying alive somehow. And then this gigantic plant here is a center cut squash. Um, look how big these leaves are. They're humongous. Uh, it's apparently really enjoying this spot in the garden, which this is like west facing because the sun rises over this fence line, hence the glare that you guys are dealing with. Um, but yeah, center cut squash. We planted this last year on the arch trellis and it did nothing. And we actually almost didn't even plant it this year um, because it did so poorly last year, but we had the seeds. So we were like, why not? And I'm glad we did because it is thriving. It's completely outgrown the trellis already and just looking for more places to grow, which is pretty wild. And it's throwing out some um, blossoms down here. Don't, I think they've closed up for the day already, <clears throat> but yeah, you can see a lot more flowers happening. So I'm excited to see what comes of this. Um, but center cut squash, if you're not familiar is, um, sometimes referred to as like a trombocino and it's kind of a, Lucas described it best as kind of a cross between a summer squash or a zucchini and a butternut squash in the sense that if you pick them young and eat them fresh, it tastes and acts like a zucchini. But if you pick them later when their skin thickens, it can store similar to a butternut, which is great. Um, so kind of cool. We'll see what happens. And then moving on after my long-winded <clears throat> comment there, but um, over on this side, we just have more beans. These are pole beans. So um, these guys are climbing up the trellis. Oh, actually, you know, right there is a little trombocino growing, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, little pole beans over on this side too. And then over here, it's kind of honestly just a hodgepodge. We have borage still. Um, it'd be kind of nice to pull it out just because it's taking up so much space, but we have so much extra space. We don't really need this spot for anything at the moment. And the bees and pollinators really enjoy these flowers. Oh yeah, there's one right there. Um, so yeah, we've just kind of left it in. I've trimmed it up quite a bit, but it's doing okay. And then kind of in this 
edge of the bean forest, we have some Swiss chard that's honestly ready to get harvested and used. It's a great size for making like lettuce wraps and things. So maybe we should put that on our menu this week. And kind of um, sprinkled here in the back, we have some more flowers. I planted a couple zinnias back here. Um, that honestly looks like maybe a borage. I don't know exactly, but uh, we'll see. So yeah, that is kind of the cool thing happening in our U-shaped bed this year. I'm really, really pumped with how good the beans are doing. Um, it's our second trial with beans and the first trial did not do well. So I'm looking forward to some canning beans. And then let me talk to you too about our compost. So if you guys follow us on Instagram, you've seen me talk about our mystery compost seedlings um, because since we talked to you guys last, we harvested our one side of compost and shut this side down, um, which this side's looking pretty good. We got it in the active stage for a few days um, and then it kind of cooled down um, cause just cause it was so hot for, we had like a heat wave of like 105 for like two days. So we didn't do a good job turning it during that time. So the compost cooled down. Um, but honestly it's been only a couple weeks of turning and it's already looking really, really good. So we might try to, um, heat it back up again just to prevent <laughs> mystery seedlings. But, um, yeah, going back to Instagram. So I <laughs> gave you guys a questionnaire on what we think this is, and I'm still not 100% sure. Um, I was thinking some sort of squash, but um, Lucas and I are thinking they might be butternut squash. I'm really hoping it's not zucchini, but it's still a little early to tell. So I'm curious what you guys think this is. This was just kind of some extra compost that we harvested and, and couldn't use anywhere. So we put it in this tote and things have sprouted. So I'm just honestly kind of letting them grow in here. It's our newest raised bed, you could say. <laughs> so let me know what you guys think. These are. Okay, let me show you guys the rest. We have our, oh, hello Liberty, you wanna say hi? Uh, we have our roses here. They could honestly use a good deadheading. Um, these ones are climbing um, roses here are just not flowering on the trellis and they keep shooting off these side shoots of roses, which I've honestly kind of just let bloom, um, but they're looking kind of sad. So I think it's about time I'm gonna cut those off and hopefully redirect some of that energy back to the arch itself. Our um, artichokes that we planted are looking really, really good. Probably won't you know, see any, it's past its growing season, so um, probably next year we'll see some stuff. Here's our other sweet mademoiselle, which is a hybrid tea rose. And then another uh, perennial herb I need to uh, redirect into a pot because this is wild. There's no way I would ever use this much lemon balm. <laughs> um, you know, I got, um, do you have a cookie recipe that's really, really good with lemon balm, but you need like a cup of it to make cookies. So um, yeah, I think that's on my, on my list. And uh, um, what we're talking about doing in here, we're deciding between putting, planting out our two blueberry bushes in the ground, um, kind of one on each side, one where that rosemary was, one where this lemon balm is currently, or planting some sort of um, perennial flower, like a hydrangea would I think do really well here. But I can't decide. Lucas and I are on two different ends. So if you guys have a vote, drop it in the comments. We'd love to hear if you think we should plant our blueberries in the ground here, or if you think hydrangeas, or if you have a different suggestion for a perennial, let me know. And you guys maybe remember the wild nasturtium that we had right here. We finally ripped that out just like yesterday or two days ago, um, just because it was growing wild and looking a little dead. So 
it was time to remove that guy. And our last bed of the tour is this one here. It's our newest bed. It's kind of on the other side of the house. But in this bed is all of our like sweet peppers. So over here are mini bells. So we have um, like four of these, I believe are all mini bells. I have one random uh, beet. I tried to plant a bunch of beets here and only this one germinated and stayed alive. So <laughs> might have to uh, start some more. And um, over here we have shishito peppers, which we're starting to see a few peppers come to life. And back here, uh, that's another shishito. This thing is might need some support here. It's looking a little bent over. Same with our poor sunflowers. Um, I think I planted these a bit late, so they didn't get a good chance to grow up super big, but we'll see if they flower or not. And then back here, um, Passion fruit vine is growing kind of whack right now, but we have um, my favorite, which are the Hungarian wax peppers, which are my favorite for salads and snacking. There's this one right here. That's like probably looking the best out of them all. We have one happening. And then right here, we planted three habanandas, which are like the heatless habaneros, which two of the three look really, really good. These are a lot slower to grow than the other peppers and really bush out. Um, not sure why that one is just kind of stunted. Maybe it's bad seed. But yeah, looking pretty good. And then the passion fruit vine I will show you guys too is so crazy right now. It's like attaching to anything and everything. It's actually like started to attach to our lilac tree over on this end and just like supporting itself. I don't know if you guys can see uh, like a lower branch with the upper branch right there. But we do have um, some flowers and uh, none of them's in bloom right now, but we noticed yesterday our first passion fruit. So excited. We haven't gotten one yet, so it should be Cool, I haven't seen another one yet, but I've seen, you know, the starts of some more flowers. Let me see if I can find a flower that's more in bloom. Um, they're kind of that like purple. It's a really cool looking flower, um, but they only bloom like certain times of the day. And I'm not an expert on passion fruits whatsoever, but um, yeah, that's kind of what's going on with this wild thing. I think she needs a trim. And I think kind of our long-term plan is to do some sort of trellis here. We're going to get plan to get rid of that lilac tree, bush, whatever, and kind of let it continue to grow over there. And then I always like to end with our two trees. Back over here, we have our avocado tree named Alfonso. He's looking pretty good. He's like grown this like crazy tree branch leader this year, which is looking pretty good. And he's looking pretty healthy, I think. Haven't grown avocados before, but um, we'll see. It's his, I believe it's his third year in the ground since we planted him. Um, but yeah, looking pretty good, I think. And then here's Leonardo, our lime tree, who's looking really good. It's that glare again from you, for you guys, but yeah, looking really, really bushy. His leaf color is pretty good. I haven't seen too much damage from like leaf miners or anything. You know, it looks like he's setting some fruit for the fall and winter season. So kind of great. Here's some more for you guys to see. A little show and tell of some future margaritas. Wow. 
Well, I think that's everything to show you guys that's growing. Um, in terms of like pests and things like that, I know sometimes I get some questions about what we're dealing with. Um, and honestly, I don't want to jinx it, but we're doing pretty well on pests. Uh, we had like a moment where I saw some aphids and I sprayed them down with some insecticidal soap uh, and they went away, haven't seen them again. Um, haven't really seen any like cabbage worms or anything else that's really bad. Kind of just that one dahlia that has um, some powdery mildew issues. Other than that, knock on wood, we're doing pretty well. We are dealing with like spiders all over the garden um, to include some black widows, which are just the worst, but we've been really just decobwebbing. I know you can spray with like peppermint oil and strong scents, um, which is supposed to help, it doesn't really help us, but we're just trying to um, kind of keep attacking their webs and hopefully, um, you know, they, they move on. But when we have a garden like this, honestly, it's just the perfect habitat for them. They like to eat mosquitoes and little worms and things like that. So it's hard to get rid of them completely, but it's just learning to live with them a little bit is what I keep telling myself. Yeah, otherwise, our garden's looking pretty good. I don't know what you guys think, but I'm really excited about it, um, especially this time of year. We are in the heat of the summer where things are starting to ripen and grow. So I'm excited to bring you guys along with our journey in the garden. And if you guys have any thoughts or questions or want to see anything else, please comment down below. I'd love to hear more about what you guys want to learn about. I'm thinking pretty soon I want to show you guys our front yard pollinator garden because it's like in full bloom right now. Um, Lucas thought I'd add it on to this video, but I'm sure this video is already really long. So I'll do that in another video um, sometime soon. But if you guys want to uh, me to talk about or Lucas to talk about anything else, I know um, I'll, we did a lot of those kind of educational videos last year, uh, which are all, all in the archive on our channel page. But if you want us to add in on any of that or do some more of those or anything else, let us know. I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, as always, thanks for joining us and I can't wait to see you next time here in our garden.